Welcome to Weddings Unveiled, the podcast designed to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. Here's your host, Angela Profit. Hi, y'all. It's Angela Prophet, your event and productivity therapist, coming to you from the heart of Music City in Nashville, Tennessee. Thank you so, so much for tuning in to this episode of Weddings Unveiled, professional tips and secrets on wedding planning and event design, where we take you behind the scenes of our past experiences in, in the event industry, what we have learned from them, and how they have made us stronger. This podcast will help you grow a productive and profitable business to launch you into success within the hospitality industry. Today, I'm joined by the best communications and event consultant in the business, Allison Burry. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for having me, Angela. I'm excited to share some of our past experiences together. We've definitely been through some unique situations over the years. What are we discussing today? Today, we're going to talk about managing mother and daughter DIY projects, which for those of you who don't know, is do-it-yourself projects. Well, I'm sure this is an interesting story. Tell us what happened. Yes, it's very interesting. So, we adored this bride and her mom, and this is when Pinterest was first getting started. I have lots of Pinterest stories. And um, the wedding and the reception was going to be at a venue that I would say is like an upscale, elegant barn type feel. And a lot of projects that they found on Pinterest, um, they were just so, so excited about doing them and making all these things together, which is totally fine if you actually, if the client actually carries through with it. Um, more times than not, we have clients start projects and then they are like, oh my God, I hate this. I'm not doing it. And then we end up finishing it, which again is fine. But for those clients who really want to grow a bond with their parent or their bridesmaids or their best friends and make things for their weddings, you know, I certainly don't want to take that experience away from them or, you know, steal their thunder. So when we first started doing the design of the wedding, the mom had all these ideas and she had pulled all these pictures on Pinterest, like bless her heart. And the bride, half of them was like, no mom, no mom, I don't like that, I don't like that. And so they would get into these little arguments in our office and, you know, really having to take a step back and play therapist, which we often have to do, um, and teach them how to respect each other's ideas and how to come to an agreement on doing some of these projects together. So I encourage them to pick a few things that they both liked and they could certainly make those items together. So as the planning process went on, there were some things that they decided they don't want to deal with. Like, for example, branding wood. They wanted to brand their initials and their monogram into wood boxes. And so that was a project that we had a wood specialist that had worked with us previously on multiple other projects who really did this professionally. And he had a professional burner. And so I quoted out how much it would cost. And it's not like it was cheap because it is time consuming. So they decided that they wanted this huge long wooden box with various things monogrammed into the box and of course the clients keep these so they make great d design things for your your house you know if you want to keep them um and I'm sure that I sent him the floor plan and I'm sure that I mentioned to him the head table had a lot of people at it I think it was like 24 feet long like four, five, six to eight foot tables. You know, so in my head, I was thinking we need a box about three feet long that would really be a wow centerpiece for this head table. And then the floral designer would come in and put candles and flowers and things coming out of the box or sitting on top of the box. So that was one of the projects that they decided, okay, let someone else handle that. And... Come the wedding day, and well, actually, I'll back up. 
at our final meeting, we talked through a list of everything that the client was going to provide. And that list had grown tremendously. It went from like, well, we're going to make boxes for all the flowers to go in. And we're making the table numbers. And we're making signs to go on the back of the chairs that say bride and groom. Stuff like that. And so it wasn't that much stuff. But again, when we got to the final meeting, that list went from like a half of a page to I think four or five pages of typed out notes of all the things that they were going to provide. And that's something that we really try to get from our clients ahead of time so that we make sure that we have everything the day before the wedding. And then most importantly, the things that they need to take back that are their personal items, we check it off at the end of the night to make sure it's loaded back into their truck, car, U-Haul, you know, whatever it is. And so we, the day before, we loaded up all this stuff and then... I think her dad like delivered a bunch of stuff the morning of the wedding for us to set up. And it's always like a fun party, like Christmas, like where you discover all these new things that weren't even on the list. And we didn't know where they were supposed to go. And this client and her mother, they were very specific about where the specific items went. So at this point, you know, I'm not going to go on the afternoon of the wedding while the bride's getting her hair and makeup done. Like, where do you want this? And where do you want this? So when we're not given clear instructions, we put it where we think it would look best. And sometimes there's things where I'm like, oh, this so does not go. So we're just going to put that back in the box and pretend like we didn't see that. Again, doesn't happen very often, but every once in a while it does. So, I mean, this wedding was just Pinterest overkill I mean it because it just it looked like a huge craft fair in a barn and um, again like that was kind of the trend but I hope this client doesn't look back like in 20 years on their pictures and was like oh my god what what was I thinking and so I mean I'm glad that the mom and the daughter got to do all these projects together and they bonded over it and they they had a fun time making most of them Um, But I will say they had specific expectations and they had something in their head. And the things that they allowed us to do, um, like going back to the wooden box, for example. So when the person showed up to deliver the boxes, um, it's not exactly what I ordered and it's not exactly what I thought we were getting. And so we got this tiny little box that was maybe 12 inches long. Um, for the head table and so it definitely wasn't a wow slash statement piece and so we were very disappointed and it's not like he could go and make another one because his wood shop was like two hours from the venue Um, so that's something where I didn't really understand where the miscommunication fell but I knew she was going to notice it and of course the first thing when they came out and saw the reception dinner area she said what happened to the box and I'm like, we got a box. It's pretty. Like, it's still something for you to keep. We'll talk about it later. Like, I always try to keep things positive when you're in the heat of the moment. And then, of course, I went back to that vendor and asked him, like, where did the measurements fall short here? Um, and, And he just, he apologized and said, I'm really sorry. I have a lot going on, a lot of projects. I totally missed it. You know, again, not the end of the world, but at least people own up to their mistakes and then they apologize. And I even believe he refunded some of her money because she didn't get what she paid for. Um, So it's nice when people step up and just admit that they made a mistake and they're sorry. But you better believe the next time we ordered boxes, I was like psycho about reiterating the sizes. And so going back to just having to unload all of this stuff. I mean, again, it was just overkill. And so I feel like I could have asked them more questions about what they were providing. And again, the list just kept growing and growing and growing. And I mean, what are you to say? Like, oh, you spent all this time making all this stuff. We're not going to use it. You know, I very carefully said, well, bring everything and we will always try to use it. But again, we don't want things to look gaudy because our name is on it. The company's name is on it. And I don't want people to think that that's how we normally decorate. 
Um, but again, you have to find a compromise and do what's going to make the client right. So Allison, I think this was probably one of your first weddings where we had more stuff than we knew what to do with. Like, do you have a takeaway from that? Um, I remember one of the biggest things that I learned was with all of the DIY projects and they can turn out really, really cute. But one thing that a lot of people don't think about is how when they, they travel, they kind of get smushed. So people who do it professionally have a better way of packing them than when you do it at home. You know, you just kind of put it all in boxes, which I'm guilty of doing it myself. (laughs) Um, but I remember a lot, a lot of our time was spent like, fixing bows that had been untied or had been smushed like with transport from the house to the venue and so there was a lot of our time that was taken away from doing setup and things that we needed to do to kind of fix a few of the things that had fallen apart or come apart and it all worked out fine but just kind of preparing for that beforehand and maybe having someone extra there to just help with the bows and all of the different things that needed to be judged up a little bit but Angela what would you say your biggest takeaway is from that wedding day? I would say my biggest takeaway is just communicating to the client that they're working with a professional company that handles planning and design on a regular basis, full time, and then ensuring that you build trust in your client to fully trust you to execute what you think is their vision. And I mean, again, we love for our clients who want to be involved to feel that they can do those certain projects. But typically, like the older I'm getting, I'm finding that most of the time it just doesn't work out that well um, for either party because they're stressed, because they've overcommitted to all these projects. And then as a designer and as our reputation grows, I I want things perfect. And um So I just think like, again, managing who your clients are and what they're going to do and what you're going to do and making sure that the client fully trusts you. Awesome. Well, can you share with our listeners some of the different products and resources that you have available to help wedding and event planners? Absolutely. So you can visit our website at AngelaProfit.com and read lots of articles and resources on the blog. We always keep that up to date. And then be sure that you're signed up for email tips to be emailed to you. We only share some of those resources through our people that are on that list. Be sure to watch for free webinars. We cover a variety of subjects in our free webinars. And then we do have a few live events coming up this year. So be sure to watch social media for that. Great. Well, Angela, thank you so much for sharing your valuable advice with us today. I can't wait for next week to share more of our incredible experiences together. And thank you, Allison, for joining me today. And thank you so much to our listeners for joining us on Weddings Unveiled, professional tips and secrets on wedding planning and event design. So like Allison said, tune in next week to learn more from our past experiences. And if you found this podcast helpful, please share it with other wedding and event professionals. Be sure to subscribe today so you never, ever miss the juicy details of Weddings Unveiled. I'm so passionate about helping other event professionals, and with my background in psychology, I appreciate that our best selves develop from real-life situations that we're sharing with you all on this podcast. So again, thanks so much for listening. Be sure to turn in, tune in next week for more tips to grow your business. And if you have a question or unresolved issues that you need guidance on, connect with us on AngelaProfit.com. And until next time, remember to stay productive and profitable. You've been listening to Weddings Unveiled with Angela Profit. Join us next time for more insights to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. For more great resources, head over to AngelaProfit.com.